Well, boys, it seems like a voodoo night to me. I mean, it's, you know, it's always a wonderful to bone up on the old magics, eh? <laughs> Shake them bones, rattle those bones, and find out what spells can be used for the, for the Mama Lao and the Papa Lao. And, uh, oh, well, hello, my dear fiends. Hello. Uh, Boris and I was just boning up on the old, uh, a uh, voodoo <laughs> from the old uh, the voodoo doll spell book and in fact it's a lot of good reading here and uh, to go go along with well your voodoo dolls of course <laughs> uh, well my dear fiends you know speaking of voodoo and the such as that eh uh, Boris tonight's feature is called House on Skull Mountain, and it's all about voodoo, <laughs> the voodoo that you do so well. <laughs> and it stars Victor French, Mike Evans, and Jenny Michelle. <laughs> so, my dear fiends, let's get turned right around here for a monster movie night fabulous voodoo special, House on Skull Mountain. Now, <laughs> let's tune in to the old internet haunted TV and watch tonight's feature with Victor French, Mike Evans, and Janie Michelle for House on Skull Mountain. <laughs> Dominus Queen Quindela Christi. Amen. Ece Agnus Dei, Ece Quitola Pacata Mundi, Meum, Sententum et Virgo et Senapitur, Anima Mea, Ece Pesaro Viaticum Corporus, Aposte Mei Enduet, Peducat, Envitum Eternum. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum. Father, you must help me. Cipolline. Toma, bring me my letter case, please. Yes. Of course, Mrs. Christoph. Thank you, Father. It will be much easier for her now. Well, don't leave her, Thomas. I know the way out. Is there anything else you want me to do? Pray for her. I will. The letters? She sent for them? Yes. What will happen? They may not come. 
But what if they do? Then Pauline will die happy.
Miss, uh... Kristoff. Lorena Kristoff. I hope I'm not intruding. Why would you say that? Well, it seems so private. Old people have few friends, Miss Kristoff. In fact, we didn't even know there were relatives. It's quite a surprise to me, too, Father. Well, I wish I'd known sooner. I hardly expected anything like this. Well, many of the old families in this area have private burial grounds. No, what I mean is I've never seen glass sprinkled on graves before. Is that a local custom, too? More a local scandal. The glass is supposed to ward off evil spirits, keep them from stealing the soul of the departed. I hope you're not superstitious, Miss Christophe. Of course not. Please don't hesitate to call. Thank you. Welcome to Skull Mountain, Miss Christoph. Thank you. I am Thomas. You have luggage? Yes, it's in the trunk. May I have the keys, please? Thomas, whose car is that? It belongs to your cousin, Philippe Villette. He arrived a short while ago. Thank you. I'd like to meet my cousin. He's inside, miss.
How you doing, sweetheart? Yeah, yeah, you just what we need right here. Your sense of humor is about as funny as your driving. Cousin Philippe. Cousin? Oh, oh, so you wanted a family. Lorena. Lorena Christoph. Yeah, what was happening, Lorena? A funeral. Our great grandmother's funeral. And very nearly my own. Oh, oh, was that you? Oh, well, I'm very sorry, Lorena. People like you ought to drive bumper cars in a in an amusement park. See, you done got yourself all upset because you went to the funeral. Ah, uh, what a shame. You missed it. Yeah, yeah, well, see, I don't go to no funerals, you understand, because uh, I can't stand to see a woman cry, especially when she's fine. And you is fine, Mama. You act like this is all one great big joke. Your great-grandmother is out there dead, and there was no one even there to mourn her. What is the matter with you? Hey, where you coming from, you understand? I mean, I never even met the old broad. You know, she ain't nothing to me. Nothing to you? No. Then what are you doing here? Why did you even bother to come? Why not? Ticket was free. Thomas said we were cousins. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, she was my grandmother, you understand? I mean, but all I ever knew about her was her name. And that ain't nothing without a face to put it to. I mean, I never even saw her before. Neither did I. You know, tonight's uh, feature, House on Skull Mountain, has, well, has much to do about voodoo, as, as you have seen so far. <laughs> hey, Boris? In fact, I thought I would uh, peruse one of my spell books for voodoo, and in fact, I found a wonderful little spell. It says, a spell for victory over evil. Now, hold that for me. Thank you, Boris. You're such a help. Anyway, here it says, the spell to be performed as a defense against enemies and those who cause uh, drama and chaos in your life. Make a black voodoo doll and name it with the name of your enemy. Ah, anoint daily with victory over evil oil. Repeat for nine days and burn a white candle each day. On the ninth day, Take the remains of that candle wax and the voodoo doll, place it in a paper bag, and leave it at a crossroads. <laughs> and that is all there is to it. Uh huh. Just take your doll, take your oil, paper bag, find a crossroads, say the, say the words, and there you are, my dear fiends. <laughs> Instant voodoo for you. <laughs> well, let's get back to the night's feature, shall we? What's the matter? Louette. I saw smoke and blood. What are you talking about? The grave, Pauline's grave. A raven flew over and dropped a wonga. And then the casket started to smoke. A wonga means somebody will die. It was meant for me, Toma. A message from the grave, Louette? I saw it. It was blood. That old woman had more power than we ever dreamed. Pauline is dead, Louette. And the dead have no power. Only the living have power. But I saw it. Oh, perhaps. But there are guests in the house and they must not be neglected. I've already taken the suitcases upstairs. Go show them up to the room. How I look? <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. I'll show you to your rooms now. Oh, we have a wake or something? I mean, how long we gotta wait? For what? Oh, read the will. I mean, you know, they always read the will right after the funeral. Oh, uh, Louette, have you met Lorena? Hello. Oh, so what about it, Louette? When they gonna read the will? Mr. Ledoux will be here tonight. He's a family lawyer. Oh, look here. Why, why are you gonna make us climb all them stairs? You know, let's take you on an elevator, you know? That's Miss Pauline's elevator. Yeah, well, I don't think she gonna say nothing. 
Ain't been fixed since she took to a bed. Hey, the smart ass witch. Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport. At this time, please extinguish all cigarettes and check to make sure your seat belts are securely fastened. Excuse me, Miss Johnson. I'm sorry to disturb you, but please fasten your seat belt. We'll be landing shortly. May I help you, sir? Hey, man, don't be doing that, you know? I'm making up on this one. Not too good. Huh? Hey, hey, how you doing? You know something? You ain't half fast, you know that? This place, baby. Skull Mountain. What y'all do around here for kicks? Open a grave or something? You know, you know, I figure a fine looking bit a young lady like you ought to get lonesome up here. Hey, let me tell you something. You know, a man likes to see smiling faces around his house. You dare? Think about what I said, yeah? Hey, yeah? Hello. Miss Johnson, this is your cousin, Mr. Philip Willard. Miss Harriet Johnson. Yeah, yeah, what's happening, Harriet? Yeah. Also, uh, you dig the scene? Scene? Yeah, the pad, uh, uh, house? Oh, yes, yes, it's yeah. very nice. Yeah. How is? The funeral was this afternoon. Hey, man, it's still going on, you know? Oh, well, she's going to be with the Lord. May I show you to your room now? Yes, thank you. Miss Pauline's attorney will be here shortly. All right. Philippe, I'm going to freshen up, so I'll see you a little later. Yeah, yeah, we're right on. Yeah. Christoph. I'm Harriet Johnson. Well, 
I guess we're related. I guess we are. My plane was a little late. I thought I'd go and freshen up a bit. Thomas? Thomas? Why don't you put her here next to me? I don't want nobody making a fuss over me or anything like that. It's Miss Pauline's bedroom. It's been kept locked now. Well, we'll have a chance to talk later, okay? All right. You hurry down. I shall. Oh, I'm sorry, am I late? You are Miss Johnson? Yes, uh-huh. Please be seated. Thank you. I'm Mr. Ledoux, Miss Pauline's attorney. Now, I take it that none of you have heard from Dr. Cunningham. Who? Dr. Andrew Cunningham. Hey, who the hell is that? Hey, look here, man. How many people are there, anyway? Oh. Huh. There are four. Miss Christoph, yourself, Miss Johnson, and Dr. Cunningham. At any rate, Miss Christoph left a letter to be read on the day of the burial. Oh, man, don't nobody care about no letter, man. Read the will. I'll read the letter. My dear children, I thank you for coming. You will not know each other, but I have known you. You are the Christophs. Yours is no common ancestry, but a proud and powerful line, rich in history, strong in spirit. And these things you should know. The Christoph legacy is a treasure beyond price, but it cannot be given. You must search for it. My enemies are defeated. Yours, perhaps, lie dormant. There are many dangers. You are a new beginning, and beginnings take time. It will not be in vain, for blood calls to blood, and will not be denied. Signed, Pauline Christophe. I will leave this letter for Dr. Cunningham, and if you would be kind enough to give it to him when he arrives, I would appreciate it. Yes, of course, Mr. Ledoux. You may notify me when Dr. Cunningham arrives, and I will come back and read the will. Hey, no, no, wait a minute, man. No, I mean, how do we know the dude is gonna show up? I mean, you know, he could be dead, you know? I mean, we can't wait here forever. Uh, what Philippe means, Mr. Ledoux, is that we all have jobs to get back to. I mean, we just can't stay here indefinitely. I understand that, and I will return one week from tonight. And if Dr. Cunningham is not here, then I will proceed to read the will, and we will conclude the matter. Good night. Good night. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Who is Dr. Cunningham? He's the only smart one. He had better sense than to go trip away to hell and back just because some old broad sent him a letter and died. The buffet's ready in the dining room. Thomas, you've been with Pauline a long time. I'm sure you must know more about the Christophs than the Christophs. I have spent more than 20 years in this house. This was Miss Pauline's favorite room. It contains the portraits of all of the Christophs. I know every face on this wall as if they were my own family. Pauline sounded like she was very proud of them. Her ancestors, I mean. She had reason to be. Henry Christophe was Miss Pauline's great-great-grandfather. He led his people out of slavery and founded a nation. Now, you hear that? Moses was a brother. <laughs> I would not joke, Mr. Philip. He was a great man. He was a king. King Henry I of Haiti. I think I remember reading about him. Wasn't he the slave who led in the rebellion against France and then later became king? Yes, Henri Christophe. Why, that's incredible. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Well, tell us about it, Thomas. Now, when the Loa Dambala possessed the slave... Loa? Spirit. When the Loa Dambala possessed the slave, Henri Christophe, these beads were a sign to remind him of all that he owed Dambala when he became a king. Oh, well, it seems to me that any spirit worth anything could do better than a string of beads, you know. I mean, uh, how about a gold T-shirt? Do not scoff, Mr. Philip. The Loa Dambala is a very powerful spirit. Oh, come on, man. You don't really believe that. Well, why not? Four million other people do. Believe in voodoo, that is. Who are you? 
Andrew Cunningham. You're the doctor? I'm a doctor. Hey, man, well, somebody must have got their wires crossed, you know, because uh, you ain't the right color. <laughs> the right color for what? Well, I mean, we're supposed to be related, and uh, you don't look related to me. Well, you don't look related to me. So I guess we'll just have to take Pauline's word for it, won't we? No, man, Pauline is dead. You know, we ain't got to take Pauline's word for nothing, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm Lorena Kristoff, and this is Harriet Johnson. Harriet? Lorena? And this is Philippe Willett. Blood calls the blood. It looked like somebody didn't check out all the blood. I'd say she checked out everything. Did you know her? No, I didn't. I wish I would have, though. What kind of doctor are you? Doctor of Anthropology. Oh, you teach? Yes, I do. University of Maine. Look, I'm sorry I'm late, but I drove down and I had trouble finding the house. Are you hungry, Andrew? Starved is a better word for it. Good. So are we. Come on, Harriet. I hope Mr. Ledoux never comes back. Somebody around here is a mighty fine cook. That food was just like manna from heaven. Are you a cook, Harriet? Cook, maid, housekeeper, you name it, I do it. Hey, man, you the one I want to know about. I had that feeling. Well, there really isn't much to tell, but go ahead and ask. Well, tell me this, man. Uh, who's the honky in the wood pile? <laughs> I don't know, Philippe. I was literally left on a doorstep, raised in an orphanage. I mean, that's why I'm here. For information, not inheritance. <laughs> That's just when we need to cheer things up. Pauline really didn't say very much, did she? Well, maybe she meant it that way. What do you mean? Well, if Pauline was really descended from Henry Christoph, she probably believed in voodoo. Pauline was Catholic. One doesn't exclude the other. In Haiti, for example, the Virgin Mary is just another aspect or a manifestation of the goddess Ursuli which is a voodoo goddess. Hey, man, how do you know so much about that? Well, when I was in college, I did some research in voodoo. I was uh, fascinated by it. I don't know why. Maybe the answer is somewhere in this house. The generator is out again. You'd better keep some of these. Oh, thank you, Thomas. Yeah. This might be a good time to go to bed. I, I gotta find a room up there yet. Good idea. Yeah, we can always talk tomorrow. Are y'all gonna leave me here by myself? Well, we are if you're staying here. Well, it doesn't look like we'll be needing these candles. Philip, you should really come upstairs and go to bed. You've had quite a bit to drink tonight, haven't you? Oh, uh, what I saw in here, you know, I ain't had that much. Yeah. Well, okay, good night. told you about that. Why don't you make some noise or something? Spooks. This place is full of spooks. <laughs> hey, you know something, Thomas? You a spook, you know that? You and your old phony voodoo. 
Hey man, tell me something. You know, just between me and you on the quiet side. I mean, I mean, do you really believe all that, all that voodoo stuff? I have seen many strange things, Mr. Philip, in this house. Things beyond belief. Say she tired, you know?
There's something down there. I think you better stay here. Uh-uh, we're coming with you. I heard a scream. The leaf is missing. Does the elevator go all the way down to the cellar? Yes. Show me where. It's over there. Thomas, you better call a doctor. Yes. Thomas, notify the sheriff. What a wonderful movie, eh, my dear fiends? Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, uh, I mean, Victor French from, you know, Little House on the Prairie and uh, Highway to Heaven. <laughs> and let's see, there was Mike Evans is in it, and you might remember him uh, on the Jefferson's, uh, uh, Jefferson's son. <laughs> and, well, speaking of the movie, this movie, House on Skull Mountain, I thought I'd bring out some wonderful exhibits from, from uh, the other rooms in here in the museum. Uh, this is actually Castle Grey Skull, but since it is cursed on Skull Mountain, Skull Mountain Grey Skull, this is from uh, He Man. I, I thought, well, you know, it's kind of coordinated. It would kind of go together. You think about it. I mean, it, it's you got the skull and you got a mountain and you got a house and it's all combined and you know these came out back in the uh, 70s late 70s i think it was maybe early 80s i'm not really exactly sure but uh, i know that i've got a couple of them and it, and it opens up into a wonderful um well a, a wonderful playset and and uh, of course, you got the back side here, and and it doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to open it this time. But anyway, believe me, it opens up like this, and it has some rooms inside of it. And of course, that this isn't the only playset from uh, He-Man. You also had to have uh, the uh, playset with uh, Skeletor, which goes really well with. Uh, tonight's feature since it's voodoo and snakes and um, and uh, and things like that and of course this is snake mountain and I guess connected to skull mountain <laughs> maybe it's the sister a sister uh, mountain in fact let's see here if we just turn it right around and, and um, put that right there ah yes you can see we've got a wonderful looking it's almost buzzard like it's almost like boris you know and to some degree of course you have the wolf microphone and you have the uh you can get the little manacles where you can put he-man or whoever gets captured in it uh, on the little sh uh uh torture rack <laughs> what fun what fun well anyway my dear fiends these are just some of the play sets that uh, i had when i was growing up and i'm sure some of you had as you was growing up as well hmm why wow. well i hope if you'd like to see them closer and like to maybe take a touch or have a little play oh it's a nice little bat right there too how nice you know th the villains had such a really cool uh place a lair it is you know i, I prefer this one much more uh, if you could combine the two imagine that what you would have but anyway uh if you as i was saying if you ever want to stop into gargoyle manor the monster museum just give me a ring or an email or a message or however smoke signals anything that you can 
<laughs> well, my dear friends, let's get back to tonight's feature, House on Skull Mountain. Thomas showed us how to get down to the basement. We found the body and we called you. That's about the size of it. Look, uh, we better start over. From the beginning this time, they all came down for the funeral. Is that right? Not really, Sheriff. You see, Mrs. Kristoff sent me a letter asking me to come. And it wasn't until I got here that I found out she was dead. Well, this dead cousin of yours, uh, Philip, uh, what's his name? Uh, any of you come down with him? No. I didn't even know I had no cousin, Sheriff. What do you fit in, Dr. Cunningham? Just like all the rest, I came at the request of Pauline Kristoff. Well, I understand that, but there's kin now. Why'd she want you? He was my great-grandmother. So none of you knew each other? Nobody knew she was dead till you all got here. Everybody knew the generator was out, so the elevator couldn't work. And nobody knows nothing. It's about the size of it. The house was quiet. There wasn't a sound before the scream. Sheriff, Philippe had been drinking. Much? The bottle of wine was almost empty. Well, it's a possibility, of course. Doc will do an autopsy. We can figure out how much liquor he had in him. Means you folks are going to have to stick around for a while. Oh, what do you mean a while? I'm due back at the university. Well, I reckon you're going to have to tell him you'll be delayed. I'm going to have to get the judge from Brunswick. He'll want an inquest. And I don't want you folks going home till we get this thing cleared up, you hear? I'll be in touch. All right, thank you, Sheriff. Serena, you all right? I'm fine. Seems like we ought to be doing something. Yeah, I know what you mean, but there's nothing we can do except get some rest. Harriet? Here, come on, honey, let's go. You okay? Uh, you didn't sleep, did you? Me either. The sheriff upset me last night when he said we had to stay for an inquest. Why can't we just leave? Go home. Arena, we cannot just walk away from this. That's not what I mean. I know what you mean. Look, there is something else here, Lorena. There's something else here waiting for us in this house. You're beginning to sound like Pauline's letter. Look, Pauline brought us here for a reason, right? Yes. You think that reason is just to have company around the deathbed? No, she brought us here for something else. And if we walk away from here now, we're never going to find out what it is. What difference would it make? What's so important about it? Lorena, it's important to me. Toma, why is the sheriff sending for the judge? It's a formality. It doesn't mean anything. It means trouble. Outsiders coming in always mean trouble. And Miss Pauline's kin, they're outsiders. What are you trying to say, Louette? I seen the way you were looking at Miss Lorena, like she was something special. Just because she's pretty don't make her different. She's a Christophe. So was Philippe. They'll be needing you at the house, Louette. Good morning. Morning, Harriet. Harriet, we're going to go to Atlanta. Why don't you come and go with us? No, the two of you go. I'd rather stay here. Are you sure? Yes. You go and have fun. You be sure and stay and rest, hmm? You be sure and have fun, okay? Okay. I'm gonna go get my purse. I'll get the car. Oh, my God. 
The sun begins to rise with you. The softness of your voice excites me. Before. 
she all right? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, find Thomas. We've got to get her to a doctor right away. Okay. to get Miss Johnson to a hospital. You better follow me over to the docks. Sorry, man. Hmm, dusting, you know. It uh, reminds me of an old poem that I, that I heard years and ages ago. See how it goes. You are dust, 
and you will turn to dust. That's why I do not dust. It might be someone I know. <laughs> This place needs about another bucket of dust, I believe. <laughs> and some more cobwebs, too. So I finally pulled him over in the middle of a downpour. Got in the back seat. She's already gone. Does young lady know? Uh, yeah, Doc, she knows. Mm -hmm. As far as I can tell now, it seems like a heart attack. Of course, I won't be sure until after the autopsy tomorrow. When are y'all going to get to it, Doc? Sometimes tomorrow. Look, Sheriff, is there a hotel or a motel close by? Oh, I'm afraid not, Dr. Cunningham. Close, I think it'd be, uh, 20 miles. You look as if you could use a sedative, Miss Christoph. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Excuse me. As soon as I hear from the doc, I'll, uh, get in touch with you at the house. Uh, thank you, Sheriff. Good night. Serena, you all right? No, you're not all right. I'm going to take you to a hotel. You can spend the night there. I'll bring your luggage in the morning. Why? Harriet, Philippe. You don't think that those were accidents, do you? No, I don't. Marina. Look at these. I found one of these in Philippe's hand last night and another one next to Harriet tonight. I don't understand. You're trying to tell me that this is voodoo. That is exactly what I'm trying to tell you. I can't believe that. These are voodoo. And that's just as real as Philippe and Harriet dying. But why? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You remember Pauline's letter? She said in that letter, what was it? Uh, my enemies are defeated, yours lie dormant. That's it. Our enemies are coming to life. And it's not because of anything that we've done, it's because we're Kristoffs. Oh, my God. Then look, let's just get out of here. Let's just go. Marina, I have to go back. What do you mean you gotta go back? Marina. Do, do you listen realize... To, listen to me. I have to go back. I have to find out who I am. I mean, you know about yourself. I mean, you, you at least know who your parents were. You at least know what happened to them. You know what your name is. I don't even know what color I am. Oh, baby, does that matter so much? It's not the color, you know that. It's, it's the knowing. Okay. We go back. We go back.
Louette. Louette. Where is he? He's got Lorena. I can stop him, Louette. Don't be so sure. Where is he, damn it? Tell me. I'll show you. But you gotta promise to take her away tonight. Come on. at the bottom. My dear fiends, this October, we, myself and Boris, are going to be at the Haunted Majestic. Aha! It's actually on October 27th and 28th that it's going to be, that we're going to be there at these thrill rides of the 2023rd Horror Host World Tour, or 2023 uh, Horror Host World Tour tour. <laughs> and of course, there's going to be other uh, horror host guests along the way. There's uh, Matt Monster Madhouse, uh, Carlos Borlos. He'll be there October 20th and 21st. Uh, Sicko Psychotic uh, Super Shock Show, October 6th and 7th. Dr. Gan Green, uh, October 13th and 14th. And The Sick World it's September 29th and 30th. <laughs> so, my dear fiends, if you get a chance to go, please come out and see us all if you can and, and have a wonderful time at this most wonderful barge that's haunted. It's the Haunted Majestic. <laughs> we'll see you there. And as always, keep screaming.
cannot wake her. She's mine. I have chosen her. And Harriet and Philippe killed them. You surprise me, Dr. Cunningham. I didn't expect so much perception from one of your background. Education is indeed a wonderful thing, isn't it? I find yours even more remarkable, Thomas. Yes. Pauline instructed me well. And yet you destroy her family. The blood is thinner now. Weak. Lorena will be spared. Spared for what? For generations. The Petions have lived in caution. Obscurity. Our powers weakened. Held in check by the Christophs. But now. To Lorena, the powers of the Christoph will be mine. A 
marriage of convenience, you might say. What about me, Thomas? I don't think you'll find me as susceptible as the others. Their ignorance was their destruction. But you, Dr. Cunningham, you have the capacity for knowledge. While Pauline Christophe was alive, you were protected. But now, your death will please me much. Awake, Lorena. Unveil your eyes. Awake, Lorena. I would have you witness my triumph. <laughs> Arise, Pauline Christophe. Awake from your long sleep. I, Thomas Petion, command it. Come to me. Come to me. Hear my voice and arise. Arise, Holy Christophe, and come to me. Come to me. Hear my voice and arise. <laughs> Pauline Christophe, I have summoned you to do my will. Look upon your descendant, the last of the Christophes. The girl is mine. I will not have you harm her. But uh, the man, Pauline, your great grandson, he is cursed. By the power of Lang Lang Su, command it. You must obey me.
So, you really are Christoph. You know that now. Well, I, I have to be sure. What do you mean you have to be sure? What do you want? Uh, mm, bone with your mama's name inscribed on it. <laughs> no, it's the curse of the anthropologist. We have to see it. Well, I'm a man of leisure now. I've got money, so I can... So you can what? Well, I can explore this house. Study it. There's some questions I'd like some answers to, like, um... who Tama Perion was and why. <laughs> I'd be afraid to find the answers. I'd even be afraid to ask the questions. I want to forget. I want to forget there ever was a Skull Mountain. It's going to be very hard for you to do, because half of this place is yours and always will be. Just don't forget there's an Andrew Cunningham. I couldn't, even if I wanted to. Andrew, don't stay here alone. I'll worry about you. Stay with me. I can't. I understand. Well, my dear Boris, what a happy ending, huh? Well, you can't have everything, can you? <laughs> well, my dear fiends, I hope you enjoyed the feature that we had on here at Monster Movie Night. <laughs> well, I, Bobby Gale Monster, your host and creepy old curator of Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, along with my sidekick and co-host, Boris T. Buzzard, would like to say to you, <laughs> have wonderful, unpleasant dreams, and, as always, keep screaming. My dear fiends, please subscribe and hit like on my YouTube channel. Spread the word and let's scare the uh, world with monsters on Monster Movie Night. <laughs> and as always, keep screaming. <laughs>